Boiler making at Blackgate's engineering. The subject of miniature steam locomotives is a very fascinating and believe me very absorbing hobby. And this is a sweet pea, but to make it function it needs a boiler. And in principle a boiler is a very simple device until you break it down into its individual components. Here is a boiler kit for a sweet pea boiler, including the flange plates. A sweet pea boiler is a marine type boiler, the firebox arrangement is different to a standard locomotive. In this video, with the help of Duncan from Blackgate's Engineering, I'm going to show you how the boiler plates are flanged. They start off as a sheet of copper. So if you really wanted to do it yourself, this is the way you would start with a suitable sized sheet of copper. This is just a demonstration. And here's Duncan marking out a big sheet of copper ready to cut. First of all, the boiler plate is cut to size on the guillotine and then the basic dimensions are marked out on the copper sheet. We're not actually going to cut this piece of copper, I'm just going to show you the principle. First of all, a hole is drilled to allow the blade of a jigsaw to cut the main hole in the copper sheet. And after cutting out the internal and outside diameter holes, here is the copper sheet all ready for forming. It's a very different colour because this copper sheet has been annealed to soften it, more about that later. You do need some specialist tools a pair of former plates and a pair of calipers to make sure that the part is in the centre and after the boiler plate blank is carefully centred between the main former plates they're clamped together and then fitted in a vise and then you need one of these this is Duncan's hammer Duncan likes his hammer and he feels very attached to it it's a special hammer one side of it is copper and the other side of it is hide or maybe synthetic I don't really know what this is but it's softer than the copper and it's this softer side of the hammer that is used to initially persuade the copper to bend around the inside of the former plates. The bending of the former plates needs to be smooth and even. It's no good banging away just in one area, I'll rephrase that, it's no good hammering the copper into one area, you have to work your way around all the time. The position of the main steel former plates has to be changed in the vise all the time as Duncan works his way around the former. Here is the changing of the position of the former in the vise, followed by more hammering. Using a normal ball pane type hammer wouldn't be much good because it would locally stretch the metal and it would be a bit of a mess. As the copper gets hammered around the former, it's going to distort and stretch anyway, but doing it with an ordinary hammer is definitely not recommended. And as you can see, once again, the former plates have been moved into another position and is nearly got all the way round on the first beating. Doing this job is not recommended if you have a hangover at 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning. That's it for the first round of beating and it's time to remove the plate from the former. The beating of the copper over the former like this causes it to work harden and if you continue beating it, it will eventually crack. This process is called annealing. It is necessary to restore the work hardened copper to a more malleable state so that it doesn't fracture. The idea of annealing is to get the copper part to a cherry red colour and then quench it in some water. And to make a piece of copper this size glow red, you need a really good heat source. Look at the size of this blowtorch. You're definitely not going to do this with a small blowtorch that you would buy at a DIY store. With a blowtorch like this, the copper starts to glow red fairly quickly which is hardly surprising, looking at the fierceness of the flame. Not only that, it's sat on a brazing hearth with these fire bricks that reflect the heat back to the copper, and also make the room that I'm currently in very hot very quickly. It strikes me that this is quite a good job to do in winter, but it must be really bad in the heat of the summer, but thankfully this year, in this part of England, the summer has not been very warm at all really. As you can see now, the partially flanged boiler plate is glowing red all over. Duncan lets it cool to black and then quenches it in water. By quenching the boiler plate in the bucket of water, the thermal shock dislodges a lot of the oxidisation caused by the heating process, and it also makes it cool enough to handle. Now the piece of copper has been annealed, it can be worked again, so it's time to put it back in the former plates. And the first thing to do is to hammer the first former plate firmly down onto the copper. And this persuades the flange to be at 90 degrees to the main flat part of the copper. In this clip, Duncan is showing how much the copper has stretched. This will have to be removed. This is done at a later stage when the copper flange plate is almost completed. 
But for now, it's back into the flange formers and back into the vise for another beating with the soft end of the hammer. And it's pretty much like the first beating, except that the copper is now laying much flatter inside the ring. As you can see, this is quite a labour intensive job. It's not an easy job to do because if you get it wrong, the copper is scrap and copper is quite expensive. This video was recorded Saturday morning on the 19th of August at Blackgate's Engineering. And while Duncan is making these flange plates, his colleague Matt is packaging all the rest of the boiler kit ready to be sent to the USA. By now, owing to the stretching of the copper, it needs sorting out. And he's doing this on a belt sander, quite a large belt sander, much better than the one I have. Once the flange plate is finished, it will be put in the sulfuric acid bath. This will remove all of the scale and will become a really nice coppery colour all over again. Most of these jobs look very simple and rudimentary until you try them. You need a really good eye to level things off freehand like this. And in this clip, Duncan is using a deburring tool to remove the sharp edge. After which, it's back to the brazing hearth for some more annealing. This clip is speeded up by 700%, and in this clip you can see that the copper gets very evenly red all over very quickly. And once again, the piece of copper is put into the bucket of water to quench it. After which it's dried and then put back into the former and in exactly the same way as previously described it's first of all beaten flat and then it's fitted between the formers with a clamp and into the vise for some more beating. A lot of people, including myself sometimes, are quite horrified at the price of a brand new copper boiler but when you look at the amount of work that's required to make one, well, it speaks for itself. This is the very beginning. There are many different formers at Blackgate's Engineering, I'll show you some of them in a moment. This particular former fits in the centre and it smooths out the centre part as Duncan knocks it all the way through. This makes sure that the internal diameter is the correct size to accept the boiler barrel. For the construction of a sweet pea boiler there are three flange plates. One is the back head at the back of the boiler, one is the throat plate at the front of the firebox and the third one is the smoke box tube plate right at the front of the barrel. The former for the back head and the former for the throat plate are very similar, except the position of the barrel is different. That's why the small peg can be located in two holes depending on which one of the plates Duncan is forming. So you think that's it? No it's not. This is the second half of the forming process. And what Duncan is currently doing is fitting the partially flanged plate over the other former. This is now a compound former, so obviously the middle part supports the already flange bit and now it's time to form the flange on the outside edge. And to keep everything nice and tight and together, Duncan is now fitting the top part of the former in place. Before commencing with the second part of the flanging operation, it's very important to make sure that this second plate is in the correct position, exactly in the middle of the disc. And once the whole assembly is fitted in the vise, Duncan starts to flange the outer part of the flange plate and by using the softer side of the hammer once again the copper is persuaded to bend around the outside of the former. And again the process is incremental. He doesn't hammer in one place for too long, he keeps the hammer moving. But this part of the flanging operation was slightly different. Duncan steadily worked his way around the outside edge for quite a long time. What I'm going to do is speed up the video because otherwise the video is going to be far too long. I'm a little worried that I may just lose the will to live. As I mentioned earlier, this is only the very beginning of the process in the manufacture of a miniature steam locomotive copper boiler. Personally, I would never flange a plate. I really don't think I could do this. It's not in my list of things I ever want to do. But look at it. It's a piece of art. Blackgate's Engineering manufacture many different types of boiler kits and here are one or two examples of the boiler formers that Blackgate's use to make the boiler flange plates for different types of boilers. The holes in these formers are for drilling through to spot mark where the tubes go. And here are some flange boiler plates that have been made by using those formers. The holes haven't been spotted yet and they haven't been in the acid bath to clean them up. So the boiler kit is not just a couple of tubes with some smaller tubes and some pieces of copper. A full boiler kit is more comprehensive and includes the flange plates. It's worth mentioning that Blackgate's also flange plates 
for the front and rear of miniature locomotive saddle tanks. A while back in one of my other videos when I was making a blower for a small coal fired boiler, I mentioned in the video that Blackgate's engineering did steam blow kits, but I got it wrong. They are not kits, they are completely finished and ready to use. And they come complete with a piece of aluminium that can be machined to fit different chimney diameters. These are a really high quality product and I highly recommend them. And another highly recommended high quality product that Blackgate sell are Rylang oil cans. These are really excellent. I've had the middle sized one probably for about 25 years. And whilst I was there on Saturday, I bought the large one on the left. These oil cans are absolutely ideal for holding steam cylinder oil, and that is also available at Blackgate's Engineering. And that's just about it in this feature for flanging the boiler plates for a sweet pea boiler. Before I go though, I would like to say one or two thank yous. First of all, I would like to thank Philip and Jackie for allowing me into their inner sanctum with my video camera. I would also like to thank Duncan, who did most of the work. And just in case by filming his face he cracked the camera lens, I thought it's safer to put a box on his head. And the gentleman on the right of the screen is Matt, who is the most helpful man in the world. Thanks, Matt. And last but not least, the lovely Heather for making the tea for us. And all I've got left to say is thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.